This is a story about what happens when you get 1% better year after year for 10 years. Follow me on this ambitious journey as I run for my life to literally become the best version of myself and discover the true power of becoming 1% better. So the next logical question is, why do I even run? I'll answer that and more in the next part of this 1% better journey. Why did you start running? What was the catalyst to get into all this run culture and everything that we do? For me, it wasn't for weight loss. It wasn't to run some epic event. It was actually three specifically weird things that I have yet to hear other runners talk about and ultimately to chase and keep chasing a romantic feeling for as long as possible. But I've narrowed it down to three reasons. One was to biohack myself to answer one question, which I'll get into. Two, to become more mindful in everything. And three, the pillars of everything 1% better, which is belief, focus, and patience. I'll get into all those things shortly. The structure of this episode, I'll start with what I'm actually doing and this whole 1% better thing, then go into the core pillars and mindsets around why this is so important. I'll then touch on why not the 10K and marathon, the rules of this whole game test experiment, where it all came from, why I actually run the 1% better theory, how you can use this for your own training, racing, and life, and much more. But before we get into it, who am I and what do you get out of all of this? I'm Darren, a sub three hour marathoner, 10 hour Ironman finisher, and this is the 1% better runner. Since 2012, I've been researching, experimenting, and talking to experts on how to get 1% better in my training, racing, and life to make it easier for you to learn from me and do all this yourself. Let's get back to the episode. Cal Newport on the compound interest of slow growth. PhD professor of computer science, New York Times bestselling author and technology productivity contrarian, Cal Newport has a great saying and idea on all this. In his latest podcast episode about Seinfeld, he sums up very succinctly an idea I've had bouncing around my head for years. He said, interviewers ask me, you do this and you do that. This feels like you would be very busy. How can you fulfill the first principle in your books, in your one book, to do fewer things if you're writing books, podcast, teaching, being father, etc.? But my answer is that I don't do all the things at the same time. I'm very seasonal. If I'm writing a book, I'm not doing other things. That pacing over time is incredibly powerful. It's like compound interest with money. It's boring this month, but when you fast forward to 10 years of doing the same thing, you have a lot of money in your account. You keep making progress on things. You don't have long down periods and you also don't overload yourself. That's the sweet spot when things really start stacking up if you let them, end quote. Biohacking myself to answer one question. Let's rewind it back to when I was running track 20 years ago in college. Back in the track days, I got moved up to middle distance from sprinting. My coaches saw that I was stronger in the longer intervals than sprint guys. So they thought I could try out the two laps around the track as fast as possible, 800 meter event. I got really close with a super strong 800 and 1500 meter mid distance runner named Shane. Before the first race of the year, all the distance guys were hanging out in someone's dorm room about to watch a hype up distance running movie. Remember, this is 2002, so there was no YouTube running channel to get hyped on. The movie was called Without Limits about Steve Prefontaine, the distance runner, and it was the second one that was not the Jared Leto one. It's the good one, the good one. And I'll never forget one thing that Steve Prefontaine said casually to another runner. Let's go out and run an easy 10 miler at five minute pace. As I was just starting to do long runs and longer intervals with the distance guys, I said to myself, well, how the hell does someone get so fit that they can run an easy 10 mile run at five minute pace? And 20 years later, I'm still trying to answer that question by experimenting on myself, talking to experts, and researching the hell out of how I can do just that. Number two, to become more mindful. Running mindfully is a thing. Sitting still and meditating is a thing. Two different things. Is there a middle ground? Can I do one and enhance the other? Running helps me get closer to that answer, I think at least. Number three, accountability and control. Belief, focus, and patience seem to be the core pillars of most successful things in my life, and I just applied it to running, and now I'm realizing the power of combining all those and the multiples that you get from it. If I show up daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly, I win. I also control the outcome of running and my own fitness and health goals. No one else, just me, my training consistency, nutrition recovery, and my genetics. Most things in life are affected by other people, but with running and health and fitness, I control that. And ironically, getting my fitness and health right 
affects all the other things in life because it's all the same. Why 1% better is important. Zooming out. People overestimate what they can get done in a day and underestimate what they can do in a decade. All of this teaches me to slow down. All haste with no speed. Life is long, but I need a sense of urgency as you never know when it's your time to end the race. Frequently ask questions rebuttals. Well, why not other races like 10K or marathon? Why not the marathon? The marathon is too hard on my body. I've tried it a couple times and it's just too much risk and input for what I think is too little output and reward, which is running the marathon. The 5K or even 10K is too easy and too short for me to do the 1% thing. Not saying a 10K is easy, but this was the middle ground of kind of easy, kind of hard. To keep myself properly focused on something very challenging, my main A race since 2018 has been to run a sub 16 minute 5K and most of the training can be used to stay relatively fit for a half marathon. I wanted the long runs for this leading up to the race each year to stretch me but not smash me. Just enough challenge, but not too much. Goldilocks zone. Marathon is where it becomes diminishing return, I think, personally. No shade to the marathoners out there. What I did that you can try. Pick a distance or race that you have control over if possible. I picked the half marathon because I knew I could do that distance comfortably, train for it in six weeks with whatever fitness I had, and I could do a DIY version of it pretty much anywhere. I like DIY races. Commit to this for 10 years. 10, yes, 10 years. Expect to have an off year or two. Always try to show up on those off years, even if you walk the event, run, walk the event. Making it a DIY event allows you to move things around your life because life is always happening. Races get canceled, you get sick, travel, family, etc. The rules. Every good challenge and game needs guardrails and rules. So here are some that I have for myself that you can use. I used whatever fitness I had at the time of the race. I can only specifically train for it up to eight weeks out, preferably six weeks out. I need to work the race around my life and not make it the main event. I cannot specifically train for it for months on end. It's okay to go backward. Life happens. The goal is to show up each year for it. Make it hard enough to be challenging, but not too easy to be bored. That's why the half marathon is the distance for me. Highlights of what happened. Here we go. So 2017, I ran a 131.40. Super excited and set the goal to get down to 121. Technically, it's 122.34. That's 10%. But rounding it out to 10 minutes overall and one minute per year is nice and round. 2018, I ran a 125. Huge jump. I thought I would run 122 by 2019. I did not. 2019, 124.01. Got faster by one minute. Had some Achilles issues leading up and the race was super hilly. But I looked down at my watch at the end and I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, oh, I ran a 124. 2020, too many issues with COVID, kid getting sick, me getting sick. I ended up not doing one that year. While I don't regret not doing it, I should have just made it an easy long run and did it. I won't ever do that again and I have not made a zero year i would have walk ran it if i needed to 2021 diy half marathon around a one mile flat loop and my watch failed midway through it died on me estimated between 127 and 129 based on whatever data i have got a new watch the next day 2022 finally hit 122 so i technically got my goal but not really i need to touch 121 2023 i wasn't as fit as i thought i would be due to the realization that i need to take a break from the 5k i ummed and odd about even doing this race but six weeks out i decided to give it whatever fitness i had and i'm really glad i did this proves that feeling unfit is different than what your body can actually do when you need it to show up 100 meters All right, I always forget how hard that last one is. But we got it. We got a little bit over the distance. 124, which I'm oh, cool. I can handle that. I'm not mad. 12% better. You know what I'm saying? What's next and predictions moving forward? While 121.59 is what will tick this box, like all runners, I have an even sexier vanity number. Nice and round. 119.59. Sub 120 sounds pretty awesome. Might take a bit more than just randomly showing up every year to race with whatever fitness I have, so I might have to be a bit more strategic. Ironically, this distance is perfect for when I focus on the marathon when all this ends, the 10 years will end when I turn 44. That's in three years, two to three years. Final words. While some people get excited about running streaks, running every day, and others about dropping 45 minutes off their best time, 
that does not personally excite me. I'm not mad at them. To each is their own. No shade, no shade. I like this 1% better each year, 10% better after decade approach. It's slow growth. It's boring and not sexy. And that is actually all of the sexy for me. It allows me to really zoom out and have perspective, let life happen and not be so damn hard on myself. I really believe this gives me the foundational confidence and discipline to apply all of this to other areas of my life. Not into 1% better. What would you rather do? What did I miss? Are you doing something similar? Reply to this in the comments below or email me talk at dlakecreates.com. I'd love to hear from all of you. Thanks a lot.